welcome to the virtual Wednesday edition of Getting the Word Out from the Bethel Baptist Church of Pasadena, California, where John T. McCall is our senior pastor. We pray that our Bible study ministry blesses you greatly. Meanwhile, if you'd like to be a blessing to the Bethel Baptist Church ministry financially, you can do it at BethelPasadena.org. Just click on the Giving tab and follow the instructions. Your support of this ministry is greatly appreciated. Our pastor is coming with an anointed word. Again, thanks for joining us here at Bethel Baptist Church of Pasadena. Welcome in Bethel and all of our special guests today to our uh, virtual Wednesday Bible study. Hey, the year is almost over uh, and we bless God for 2020 in spite of it all. Uh, we give God the praise for keeping us. Uh, listen, author and theologian A.W. Tozer uh, said, what comes through our mind when we think about God is the most important thing about us. Let me say it again. Uh, author and theologian A.W. Tozer uh, said, what comes through our mind when we think about God is the most important thing about us. What comes to your mind when you think about God uh, as we prepare to close out 2020? Uh, is it God's greatness? Is it God's goodness? Uh, is it the fact that he's kept you all year long? Um, what do you think about uh, when, when God comes into your mind? His greatness, uh, his love for us, uh, his care for us. Uh, we're, we're just uh, really a few hours from entering a new year. Uh, and, and, and somebody uh, ought to praise the Lord for the struggles of 2020. Uh, I, you know, I know it's been a difficult year, uh, but God has been with us. Uh, he's been faithful to his word uh, and he's never left us. Uh, even in those moments of uncertainty, uh, when, when the load got heavy, uh, when we didn't see a way out, uh, God was still there with us. And you ought to just take a few moments uh, uh, do, at the onset of this Bible study uh, to simply praise the Lord and thank him for his goodness and his kindness uh, and for his keeping power in your life. Um, we're in this uh, preaching series now titled Planted uh, to Produce. Uh, and I believe that God has planted us uh, in our various situations so we can be productive. Uh, God has purpose and plans for our lives, uh, and, and his desire uh, is for us to yield a hundredfold. Uh, he has so much invested in us, uh, and the awesome privilege, the privilege we have um, uh, of belonging to God uh, and, and, and being planted in productive soil. Uh, God wants our lives to be productive. He wants our lives uh, to reflect the goodness he, of, of him in our lives. When we look at uh, preaching scripture uh, for last week and this week in Luke chapter 13, uh, verses 6 to 9, uh, the physician Luke um, uh, records this parable uh, spoken by Jesus. Uh, in response to concerns that were raised by others about calamities in life. Uh, when you go back and look at chapter 13, uh, beginning at, at, at verse 1, um, uh, the crowd comes to Jesus, uh, and, 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 and they give them several scenarios, uh, and, and Jesus has to respond back to them, uh, and he says that, uh, that calamities can happen to anybody. Uh, uh, simply because we're human. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're saved or unsaved, uh, life can happen, and life happens to us all. Uh, and, and, and in those few verses, uh, Jesus cites two common incidents about destruction. Uh, Galileans uh, came to him, and, 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 and they were concerned about Pilate. Uh, apparently, uh, some of Pilate's soldiers um, uh, had um, kill some people uh, and, and, and mix their blood with their sacrifices. Um, and um, and the second one uh, was scenario concerning 18 seemingly 
innocent bystanders uh, in a place called Salome uh, who were killed when a tower uh, fell on them. Uh, and, and Jesus points out, um, uh, his point in, 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 in the text was uh, that being killed or, or not being killed uh, is no measure of a person's unrighteousness or righteousness. Anybody can be killed, uh, but only God's grace uh, can cause uh, any to live. Uh, if you want to live, uh, this life and the afterlife, you you need God's grace. Uh, and the point um, is it, brought out in verses 3 and 5 when you read it uh, in Luke chapter 13, that unless you repent, you uh, you too will all perish. Uh, and, 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 and this this requirement uh, to enter into heaven to repent. Uh, and, and the question as we close out this year, have you repented? Uh, have you accepted Christ into your heart? Uh, and, and, and this term repentance, um, as I taught and continue to say, is more than saying I'm sorry. Uh, repentance is a change of mindset about your behavior uh, and, and, and admitting that uh, you're wrong uh, and, and that you need Christ in your life. Uh, and without him in your life, you are not capable of doing that which is right. So repent uh, of your wrongdoing uh, and accept Christ as Savior. Um, and uh, only repentance uh, can bring life as people prepare to enter the kingdom. And listen, all of us have an appointment uh, 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 with, uh, with our last day, uh, with death. Uh, and, and you need to have repented pride uh, to uh, uh, life leaving this body. Uh, have you repented? Uh, have you accepted Jesus as your personal savior? Uh, in, in this life, all of us have struggles. Uh, uh, it's a part of life. Uh, and the struggles that we experience are designed to deepen our faith and cause us to draw closer to the Lord. Uh, they are not designed to drive you away from the Lord. They are designed to deepen your faith and draw you closer uh, to the Lord. Listen, it's easy following Jesus uh, uh, when you're receiving and things are going well. Uh, and you are the recipients of his goodness and, and, and the wind is at your back and you don't have any uh, complications, no struggles. Uh, but what happens? Uh, when life becomes a struggle, uh, when life becomes a struggle, um, uh, and all of us have to be mindful, have to be responsible uh, to not allow the stressors of the journey God has us on uh, to cause us to miss out on the benefits of a journey. Listen, life is a journey. Uh, and God has you on a journey, uh, and, you, and you have to be responsible uh, to not allow the stressors or the heartaches or the difficulties of the journey uh, God has you on uh, to allow you to miss out on the benefits of the journey. Listen, at the, at the end of the journey, uh, the goal is to make you stronger. The goal is to give you a reward. The goal is to give you an inheritance. The goal is uh, to cause life uh, to be lived in such a way. Don't miss the benefit of the journey by virtue of allowing the stressors on the journey to cause you to get distracted, to lose hope, to quit, to be so tired, uh, to faint along the way. Uh, and, and, I, and I know it's easy it's easy to get caught up in the problems along the journey and allow those problems to distract us, uh, to cause us to wander and to doubt and to miss out on the reward of a journey. Jesus is with us up when we're down, through thick, through thin. Uh, he's a very present help. Uh, and and, and, and in, in the preaching thing we're in, um, this tree, um, uh, this um, this fig tree that had been planted in a vineyard, 
And we said early on, the quest, first question is, why is a, a fig tree in a vineyard with vines? Well, it was not uncommon in that day uh, to have different crops growing in productive soil. Uh, and so the fig tree uh, had been placed in a place uh, where the soil was productive. Um, there were other plants, other trees that were growing and doing well. Um, uh, but this tree, uh, this particular uh, tree was, was not productive, and yet it possessed the potential to be productive. It had the capacity to yield fruit, uh, to benefit others. Uh, however, uh, it, it needed some help uh, to grow into productivity. And many times in life, many times in life, um, uh, as believers, uh, you can become comfortable with being saved. And I call this fire insurance. You're not going to hell. Uh, and, and, and so you so, so you're saved, uh, but you're stuck at salvation. Um, and, 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 and and life has never really been transformed for you uh, to be productive uh, because you're still at the elementary level and believing that it's okay. But God has more for you uh, than simply just to save you, to be nothing and do nothing. God saved you to transform you, to cause you to be productive, uh, to produce some fruit in your life. And we understand that character is built um, in the struggle. Uh, prayer is solidified in the struggle. Uh, and, and, and in this preaching um, uh, thing we're in, um, God is the owner uh, of the vineyard. Jesus is the vine dresser, uh, and we're the tree. Uh, man, listen, we're the tree. Uh, God is the owner of the vineyard. Uh, Jesus uh, is the divine dresser uh, by way of the Holy Spirit today. Uh, and, 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 and he wants to reveal some stuff to us. And, and when you look at this story, man, it, it, it's the, the, the owner, God, uh, comes to what's his. Uh, and, 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 and taking a look at how productive is the crop? And as he comes and approaches this one tree, uh, he says, I've been coming to this tree three years now. Uh, and, and we understand when you plant a tree, uh, it, it needs time to grow, uh, to develop. Uh, we don't know how long this tree had been there. Uh, but typically, fig trees uh, take three to five years to yield some fruit. Uh, and so apparently the expectation was in that third year uh, to find some fruit on that tree. Uh, and God, uh, and, and in his own unique way, comes and looks. Uh, he sees the leaves on the tree, uh, but, but there is no fruit on the tree. Uh, and many people go through life looking good, uh, but they have no fruit. Uh, they have no substance to their lives. They, uh, they, they don't possess uh, those things that would be evident of the richness of God in their life. So this tree looked good, uh, but didn't possess any fruit. And, and God is a just God. And, he, and he, he he's an all-time God, too. Uh, and, and he is a God of time. All of us have been allotted a measure of time. We just don't know how much. Uh, and he comes and he looks at this tree uh, and he says, listen, uh, it's taking up space. Uh, it, it, it's pulling nutrients from the soil um, that the other plants or trees that I could be getting and taking advantage of. It's absorbing the sunlight and the water uh, uh, and the wind. Uh, and it's not producing. Uh, and, and, and he says, cut it down. Cut it down. Uh, it's of no use. But you ought to thank God for the vine dressing. Uh, uh, Jesus, Jesus puts in the request. He says, leave it alone. He, he says, leave it alone till next year. He says, give me some time. Um, let me dig around it. Um, um, let me put some fertilizer in it. Um, um, let me work with it. 
another year. Uh, and if you come back next year and it doesn't have any fruit, then cut it down. Take the ax and cut it down. Uh, and, and as we prepare to close out uh, the year 2020, uh, uh, God has time frames. And I believe he wants the church, he wants individuals in the church to be productive right where you are. He's expecting some fruit in your life. Uh, and many people are stuck, uh, stuck in the routine, stuck in the madness, um, um, uh, are stuck and keep repeating every year after year uh, the same old cyclical cycle uh, of depression and unresolved uh, issues in our lives uh, and unable um, uh, to make the leap. Uh, but, but in 2021, uh, you've got to make up in your mind that you're going to let God work on you. Um, you got to make up in your mind that those situations and circumstances that you've been complaining about, seeing as demonic uh, and causing you all this grief, you got to see them as lessons to learn, to strengthen your faith, uh, uh, to cause you to pray more, to trust God more, cause you to surrender and, 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 and yield your life to him. There's a difference when you surrender um, and, 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 and find out the revelation uh, of what God wants in your life. Uh, uh, and they say everybody wants greatness, but nobody wants to go through the process of being made perfect, uh, of how God has to, re has to refine us, uh, has to reshape us, ha has to mold us. Nobody wants to go through that process uh, and, and struggle it's great. Struggle teaches us uh, when you come out of the struggle uh, to appreciate the fact uh, that God was with you in the struggle and now he's brought you out of the struggle and your ability to maintain in the struggle uh, could be your destiny. And too many people quit. Too many people become despondent when they're going through life. You got to stay focused and keep your eye on him. And know that he's in charge. And if it happened, he allowed it. He permitted. He may have not sent it, but he allowed it. He permitted it. And it's for a purpose. And as we know, Romans 8, 28, that all things uh, work together for the good of those who love the Lord and the call according to his purpose. God wants to increase your capacity to be able to receive what he has for you. He's not going to give it to you knowing that you're not ready to receive it, knowing you can't handle it. And God is saying, what I got for you, you need to grow a little bit more. I need to develop you a little bit. I need to increase your capacity to handle uh, what I have for you. Let me dig around you. Let me pull some weeds out. Uh, let me soften up the dirt so it can receive the muscle. Sometimes, you know, uh, sometimes the dirt, the ground gets so hard uh, that the water just runs off uh, and, and most of it doesn't get to saturate in. Uh, he says, let me let me just break up this fallow ground. Let me fix it so that, that, that when I water it, water can get down to the root. That when I put the fertilizer in, it'll mix. Yeah, and, 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 and it ultimately caused growth in your life. And, and so many people uh, this year have become stagnant, uh, um, have become stuck where they are. Uh, uh, but, but if God allowed it, uh, it's designed to grow you. Um, and, 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 and elevation, uh, when, when God raises you up, It'll reveal your thoughts about God while you're in the valley. See, if you're in the valley complaining and murmuring and, oh, my God, and, you know, and all this talk, uh, uh, then how are you going to have to get elevated? Uh, your thoughts about God have to be he's kind, he's merciful, he's long-suffering, he's going to get me through it. I'm, I'm totally reliant upon him. And, and, and so now when he elevates you, you don't have a problem staying where he puts you uh, because you understand what it took to get there. And many people want the easy way out. There is no easy way out. 
this story, this story closes, um, and it doesn't tell us. Uh, it doesn't tell us what happened the next year. Uh, and it, he doesn't come back uh, with this parable to explain to us how it turned out. Uh, which suggests to me, if he doesn't tell us, it's up to you. Um, uh, what will next year reveal to you? Uh, what will 2021 be different about you? Uh, uh, um, next year, uh, will you produce anything? Will you grow? Will you mature? Will you develop? Uh, 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 or will you still be stagnant? You know, that comes a time when every believer has to mature, uh, has to grow up has to accept the fact that you're not your own. You don't belong to you. You belong to God. Uh, and, and, and quit the fight uh, and allow him to lead and direct your life. Why? Because he wants to produce some fruit. Man, figs in, 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 some, in, in some areas, uh, figs can produce 18 months out of the year. God wants your life productive. He wants to be able to use you. And, he, and, and he's not going to use you up. Uh, and then if he does, he's going to replenish you. Uh, but in the process of him using you, he's going to produce in you. And guess who gets the benefit from it? You do. The benefits of honoring God, the benefits of trusting God, are a man of what God will do and expose in your life and how he'll bless you. Uh, listen, um, um, this has been a long, arduous year. COVID-19 uh, has taken the fight out of some people. Uh, and others, it's caused us to go deeper. Uh, and and we got to remain vigilant, never discouraged, um, never allowing the devil to get a stronghold in our lives, but to realize that this journey God has us on, he wants to elevate us, take us to our destiny, God is bigger than COVID. He's bigger than that. You got to do your part and watch God do his. Disciples, 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 disciples are made. Um, uh, and, and we follow Christ because we're Christ-like and we want to be like him. So, so, so this next year, this next year, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm asking every Bethel member uh, uh, this next year, um, uh, let's, let's get better, uh, a better prayer life, uh, a better Bible study attendance, um, a better Sunday morning church attender, a better worshiper, a better reading your Bible person, uh, uh, a better parent, a better young adult, a better seasoned saint a better man, a better woman, better boy, better girl. Uh, work on yourself. Let him in 2021, you surrender uh, and, and let him dig around you. Let him fertilize you. Let him cause you to become productive in the new year. Listen, listen, uh, COVID crisis is not going to last forever. Uh, at some point, uh, we're going to be back in worship. Uh, and when we come back, are you going to be ready to work? Are you going to be ready to serve? Or are we going to have to um, um, uh, spend a year or two um, uh, with you uh, having to grow? We need you now. The church will need you. In fact, the church needs you now. But but when, when we resume, we need you more than ever. So you got to make up in your mind uh, that you're going to become productive. You're going to be different. No, and I'm not. I'm not a person that likes to um, do New Year's resolutions, all of that, because uh, you don't know where God's going to take you in the New Year. Uh, I just simply want to humble myself and be submissive to God wherever you lead. I'm gonna follow. Whatever you sin, whatever you allow, I'm gonna trust you through it. Uh, and I'm gonna allow you to elevate me, increase my capacity. Uh, so when you bless me uh, with reward for the journey. I'm going to be able to receive it and maintain it and not forget where it came from. I'm not going to lose my head. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm not going to lose my faith because I'm going to trust him. Uh, and all of us, 
uh, have got some things we need him to work on, to dig around, uh, to remove, to fertilize, to plant, to pull out uh, so we can be better next year. Even the preacher, even you seasoned saints, uh, you got some things you need to give to him. Let him dig around it, whether it's your heart, your mind, or attitude, or whatever it is. Let him dig around it. Let him pull that junk out. And then let him put his fertilizer in uh, and cause you to be productive. Listen, I, I pray. Uh, I pray you're blessed, that you're safe as you prepare. And if God allows us to see 2021, um, to thank him. Uh, to thank him and to praise him uh, because our God is a good God. Uh, and he's good all the time. And all the time, God is good. Listen, tune in. Uh, tune in um, um, this Sunday, uh, first Sunday of the new year, as we close out uh, this message. Uh, uh, tune in and, and uh, start the year off worshiping and get back to your Sunday morning routine, 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock is church. Not Sunday evening, not Monday. Uh, let's get back into the routine of worship on Sunday. Uh, uh, but until then, uh, you stay in the best place. Pastor, love you. Uh, and let me be the first one to wish you a happy and prosperous 2021. Be blessed. Thanks for joining our Wednesday night virtual service here at Bethel Baptist Church of Pasadena, California. Again, visit our website for giving information and more. It's BethelPasadena.org. On behalf of Pastor John T. McCall, thanks for watching. If you're ever in the Pasadena San Gabriel Valley area, we invite you to come in and visit with us at 1972 North Fair Oaks, Pasadena, California. To order a copy of today's message or for more information, log on to BethelPasadena.org or call the church office at 626-794-7436. Through the trial, through the tribulation, Jesus.